Hi, and congratulations on completing week one, Herman Hu, an introduction to hermeneutics. Now, I wanted to kind of go through a couple pieces of the assignment, uh, help to explain how I graded, uh, and to give you some, some tips, I think, that will help you as you move through the semester if you want to maximize your scores on assignments. Um, now, for the goals we had to outline the organizational structure of a narrative passage, to articulate the goal and challenges to effective biblical interpretation, and to evaluate the artistic and scientific aspects of biblical interpretation. Our first assignment was really to look at chiasm as a mechanism to understand the key of a passage. And on whole, folks did a good job on this assignment. And in fact, on, on whole, people did a very good job throughout the entire week. Uh, and I'm tickled that we have such, such a bright uh, and engaging class. I think that's going to bode well, and, and I look forward to the next several weeks. Um, so based on your analysis, you were then to state the key point to each and provide a conclusion paragraph that explains the term chiasm. So folks did each step well, but sometimes, especially in this first part, um, kind of missed um, a couple of, of the components. So A and A prime and A double prime or A and A prime, um, creation of man and the establishing of sacred space. I believe I gave you that one. Uh, and so we want the last one um, to also tie to sacred space because um, one of the keys to A and A prime, B and B prime, C and C prime uh, is to find a common denominator that you can use in both. And that's what helps to create the parallelism that you see. So in that first one, the key was really sacred space. Creation of man and the establishment of sacred space versus the punishing of man, and by that I mean mankind, and the banishing of man and woman from sacred space. So the key is sacred space, and we have two bookends, creation and banish. On the second, it's the creation of woman and the establishing of human community, followed by the punishing of woman and the disruptive, disrupting of community or harmony. So we have two points, woman in both and community in both. And then C and C prime, the serpent tempts woman, and then God punishes the serpent. So the key to C and C prime was looking at the serpent, serpent and the relationship. And then I see, and, and one student used, um, well, I see on, on the center, sin and God's confronting it. Um, I think actually more important than even sin and God's confronting it is the idea of separation from God, that sin enters the world and changes the relationship between mankind and God, separating humans from God. Uh, and so as you look at these, be sure in each of your parallel components to find a common word or phrase or subject, uh, and then try to really drive down to what is God's core for this assignment. Uh, and I think separation for, from God is even better than what I had put initially, which is sin and God's confronting it. Oh, another point on this. Um, as you're looking at my grades, anytime you do a written assignment, not a discussion post, but a paper or any other uploaded PDF or Word doc document, I will make notes in your document. So be sure to go back and not just look at my grading summary, but also look at the comments that I've added to your upload. Uh, and that will help you, especially on citations if I find errors or grammar if I see errors, I will note it there. So on Exodus 6, uh, clearly A and A prime are I am the Lord. That phrase is our bookend. Uh, B and B prime give the Israelites the land of Canaan, and then give the Israelites the land of Canaan. So we have this same bookend about a gift of the land. And our real point here is really exploring covenant. Uh, so God gives a covenant to the Israelites in giving Canaan as that land. 
uh, C and C prime is rescuing Israel from bondage and then rescuing Israel from bondage. So God remembers that he made this covenant uh, while the, you know, the Israelites are enslaved in Egypt, and then God acts on that knowledge in C prime. And then our center is God takes Israel as his people. Um, so this whole passage, when you begin to explore it, is really about God's covenant with the Israelites surrounding the land of Canaan. Uh, and without doing a chiasm, we may not get the depth of covenantal language that is employed here. And then finally with Joel, uh, A and A prime are God dwells in Zion, God dwells in Zion. Uh, B and B prime, Jerusalem is holy, and Jerusalem and Judah are preserved. C and C prime, foreign invaders are banished, and foreign enemies are destroyed. Uh, and the center is the blessings of the kingdom. Um, so this is all, all about God's relationship with mankind and blessing them and protecting them. So uh, our chiasm here helps to give us our key point. For assignment one, two, I wanted you to explore the effective biblical interpretation by listing four challenges to effective biblical interpretation and then explaining them. I also put on our introductory video that you should include an introduction or conclusion, and only about half the class did. I noted it and will start to count off in the future. Every assignment should have an introduction and a conclusion that is central to the learning process to set up what you're learning and then reflect on what you have learned, or at least what you have presented. You may have known it in the past. Um, and so just be sure, always include an introduction and conclusion. Other than that, folks did a, a, a very good job on this assignment. Any assignment should also interact with both the reading and the Bible. Uh, and in this assignment, there were some folks who did a good job bringing the reading in to their assignment as an example or evidence, uh, but they didn't give any biblical examples, uh, and I'm always looking for that for perfect scores. Now, finally, the, the last one, which is both the easiest and the hardest, is a discussion post. And the, the key to understanding it, and some folks um, kind of argued with the, the assignment. The assignment said, do you believe biblical interpretation is more of an art or assignment, a science? I did not say, do you believe biblical interpretation is only an art or assignment or a science? Uh, and, and so keep in mind that, that I do un understand, uh, and the reading makes very clear, uh, that it is both. But while it is both, which one is dominant? Uh, and to me, the, the keys to that are struggling with the fact that both are true. The Holy Spirit is going to operate on the more artistic side. Uh, a straightforward process, like a word study perhaps, uh, is more of a science side. Uh, both are, are important. But which one do we have to guard against and which one should we use most uh, in our interpretation? For instance, if you say that the Holy Spirit guides me in my interpretation, that's awesome. But where are the limits? How do you know when the Holy Spirit is, you think it's the Holy Spirit guiding you forward, but in, in fact it is your mind that has artistically moved you forward and out of a true exegetical understanding. So how do we safeguard ourselves um, and allow the Holy Spirit to work? Uh, or if you say it's purely a science, then it's a rote process, and, and how do you allow the Holy Spirit to work in that? Uh, so I see the Holy Spirit as a critical dividing line between art and science. And I did love one student talk, talked about that art is a scientific process, or the scientific process is an art, and I think that that's true, and I think that's a great answer. Uh, but I'm looking for where do you start on interpretation? How do you begin? And if you say in translation, well, if you don't know Hebrew, then how do you begin? Um, so how do we begin the process of interpretation? 
And then how do we safeguard the process of interpretation? Uh, and I tried to guide the discussion into that direction a little bit, but that was the core to me, is, is how do we know when we're doing the right things and how do we know that we've gone too far? All right, um, on looking at this discussion, I am looking for ongoing engagement. I'm looking for timeliness. Does the student complete the required post and response on time while the discussion is still current? Or do they come in Friday night and make some posts and then come back in Monday when it's pretty much all over and make some posts? Uh, I'm looking for ongoing engagement, which I saw from several people and really appreciated. Um, responses are made over the course of the week, uh, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and are not batched as comments over one sitting. Um, some other things just to keep in mind on this inter interpretation. The Bible was written a long time ago, far, far away, to a people that had a different language and culture from our own. So since the Star Wars movie is fairly current, uh, I thought that's a great way to start to recognize that it was a long, long time ago. Uh, they, it, there is a gap in time that we have to compensate for. Far, far away, a gap in culture that we have to uh, compensate for in our interpretation. To a people that had a different language, Hebrew, Aramaic, Akkadian, uh, than we had, and a different culture, cultural values, cultural understandings, different writing styles from our own. Uh, and you will need tools and methodology to bridge each of these gaps. Keep in mind that the idea, um, at least I believe in, in our textbooks teach, that the biblical text has one intended meaning. And that's something that we need to think about, is that we sometimes think, well, the Bible has many meanings to me. Well, God intended those words through that author to the initial hearer, to have one meaning. Now, it might have an infinite number of applications in my life, but our goal and our job is to truly understand what God inspired out of that text. Finally, um, Bible is capitalized, not low, lowercase, even in discussion posts. Biblical is not capitalized uh, and is lowercase. Um, several folks had that error in their discussion as well as in their paper. Um, I really appreciate all the work you, you did this semester or this uh, week. Uh, I, I think that we're off to a great start. Uh, I really enjoyed this, this class and I enjoyed uh, getting to know you at least a little bit and hope to get, you know, to get to know you more as we move through the semester. Have an awesome day.